We now turn to present a lovely property of the two ortho case, an uncertainty principle. Armed with a mutual coherence, we aim to study the P0 problem and specifically the uniqueness of its solution. However, rather than doing that, we shall divert our story for a few minutes and focus on a seemingly different task. Consider a non-trivial signal B of length n, and let's just assume for simplicity that it is normalized. We can represent this signal using the two ortho bases, and these two representations are simple to obtain. B equals psi times some vector alpha, or phi times another vector beta. There is no ambiguity with respect to these two vectors. Their computation is direct and, and simple. The question we will concentrate on is this. Could alpha and beta be arbitrarily and jointly sparse? As we are about to show, the answer is negative. We will prove an uncertainty rule that says that the sum of the number of non-zeros in alpha and beta must be above a certain threshold. Take a close look at this rule we have just stated. It must look familiar to you, as it bears a close resemblance to the Heisenberg uncertainty theorem. Indeed, posed in pure mathematical terms, Heisenberg theorem states that for a signal f of x and its Fourier transform capital F of omega, the multiplication of their variances must be above a threshold. This implies that if one of the two functions is highly localized, the other must be widely spread. Thus, Heisenberg's theorem is a claim about the behavior of the supports of the functions in two domains, location and frequency. Our statement is also about supports in two domains, psi and phi, but our claim has a discrete flavor. Rather than talking in terms of concentration and variances, the new rule simply counts non-zeros regardless of their location. So here is the theorem, stating that the sum of the number of non-zeros in alpha and beta is lower bounded by 2 over mu. As we can see, the coherence plays a key role in this claim. Indeed, if mu equals 1, that is, in the maximally coherent case, we get that the lower bound becomes 2, which is a non-informative statement. In this case, both alpha and beta must have each at least one non-zero, since b is non-trivial. Naturally, we will be interested in more informative cases where mu is very small. Let's prove this theorem. As we have mentioned before, we shall assume that b is normalized, which implies that alpha and beta are of unit norm as well. We start by describing b as a weighted sum of the columns of psi, where the coefficients are the entries of the vector alpha. Assuming that the location of the non-zeros in alpha are denoted as the support S alpha, the summation goes over the elements of this support. Taking an inner product between B posed as this term and an arbitrary column from phi, we get a one entry in the vector beta. We square this term and get this expression. Using the cauchy schwarz inequality, we can upper bound the above term by the multiplication of two parts the first being the sum of squares of the entries in alpha, which is simply 1. The other part is a sum of S alpha elements, each being a square cross inner product of columns taken from psi and phi, and as such known to be smaller than mu squared. Thus, all this expression can be upper bounded by the number of non-zeros in alpha times mu squared. We are nearly done. Here is what we have gotten so far. Summing both sides of this inequality over the support of beta, the left-hand side becomes 1, while the right-hand side is the multiplication of the number of non-zeros in alpha times the number of non-zeros in beta times mu squared. From this emerges the following uncertainty rule, which states that the multiplication of the number of non-zeros in alpha and beta must be above a threshold, being 1 over mu squared. This is a lovely result by itself, and perhaps it is even closer in spirit to the Heisenberg relationship, but it is not the one we target. Relying on the well-known relation between arithmetic and geometric means, we easily get that the sum of the number of non-zeros is lower bounded by 2 over mu, just as stated. As an example, in the identity Fourier case, we have seen that the mu is 1 over square root of n. Thus, the bound in this case becomes twice square root of n. This suggests that when given a signal, it cannot be sparse both in time and frequency, and it must have jointly at least two times square root of n non-zeros. 
An interesting question is whether this condition is tight. That is to say, is there a signal for which this rule applies with an equality? The answer is positive. Assume that square root of n is an integer. The well-known picket fence signal is periodic with period length of square root of n. Each period starts with 1, followed by zeros. Relying on the Poisson summation formula, the Fourier transform of this signal is itself. Thus, we have found a signal containing exactly square root of n non-zeros, and the same holds true for its Fourier transform, giving an equality in the uncertainty rule.